And when we look at Christopher Columbus and his exploration, why did some countries in South Africa, South America have 16 synagogues? If they didn't have no Jews, what would they do with so many synagogues? And who was Columbus in the first place? No one ever proved he was Spanish. No one ever proved he was Italian. There's seven different places where they say he was born. Fake, a hustler, con man who discovered nothing. Some evidence proved he was Jews. Why did the Jews have to leave Spain? They were the money managers of Spain, the grandees. All this is so well documented. Now, recently we've discovered that Christopher Columbus, Cristobal Colon, was known as a quote-unquote Marrano. Mm. Marrano? Mm -hmm. The Marranos are those that were forced to convert to Roman Catholicism that were Sephardim. What is the Jewish link to the discovery of America? There is speculation that Christopher Columbus may have been Jewish. The astronomical charts that he used on his historic voyage were prepared by Abraham Zacuto, a Jew. It is also known that members of his crew were Jewish. In the same year that Columbus left Spain for the New World, as many as 160,000 Jews were expelled from Spain. In 1492, King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella of Spain decreed that Spanish Jews convert to Catholicism or leave the country within four months. This expulsion brought an abrupt end to the troubled yet illustrious history of Spanish Jewry. The Jews of Spain knew both times of religious tolerance and times of cruel persecution. But Spain also offered a period of enlightenment for Spanish Jewry. In the 8th century, Arabs occupied most of Spain and welcomed the Jews. Traditional Jewish thought meshed with contemporary Arabic culture. And in the 10th and 11th centuries, a period which became known as the Golden Age, Jewish culture reached unprecedented heights. Columbus sailed to the New World while the Jews of Spain scattered to foreign lands, Africa, Asia, Holland, England, Turkey, Greece, and Palestine. Okay, I find it absolutely uh, mortifying that um, we're going to claim Columbus is one of our own as a Jew because Columbus is such a problematic character and begins the beginning of, of the uh, European, let's call it the invasion and in a sense destruction of the native populations of South America and North America. So I don't know. But on the other hand, that doesn't mean he wasn't a secret Jew. And I've got to, I, I know for sure, Rabbi, that there were Muranos or Conversos and secret Jews who made their way with the Spanish conquest to uh, South and North America. There's no question about that. But I, I really want to ask, are we, are we happy to claim Columbus as, as our own? Is he, is he a secret Jewish hero? I believe he is. I believe that um, uh, Anthony, Anthony Baratta, who is um, the president of the Order of the Sons and Daughters of Italy in America, he wrote something recently. He said that regardless of what you think about Columbus, the, he, 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 he joined the old world of Europe to the new world of what was to become America, and his voyage changed the world forever. So, do we claim him as a Jew? Well, when you said, you, you said that, yes, indeed, I'm going to go back to one little point you made, because you said, yes, indeed, there were Moranos on, the, on Columbus's ships. They, yes, and you, you um, uh, agreed to that. Well, my, I would say to you, who's going to let Jews on a ship except another Jew? Who happened to be captain or or organizer of the of the entire expedition, and so what do we know about um, Columbus's um, a background? Well, first of all, we know that his surname was Colon. Colon is a, a recognizable Spanish and Italian Jewish surname. We know that we believe that he was a secret Jew. And because he worked alongside of fellow Jews during the horrors of the persecution that were brought on by the Inquisition. Also, um, uh, in an opinion piece on a CNN um, 
uh, blog in 2012, an author by the name of Charles Garcia, actually I should call, it, call him a, a historian, he summarized what historians have long suspected and believe now that they've been able to co corroborate, and that is that, uh, that, that um, Columbus wrote and spoke in Castilian Spanish, which was Ladino, and uh, when he, in his letters that he wrote, he signed them off with a phrase meaning, with God's help, that only Spanish Jews wrote on their letters as a way of being able to identify one to another. But the most compelling evidence is in the museum, the Maritime Museum in Genoa, Italy. And there you can see Columbus's manifests from various of the many voyages that he took. And what is so, com the most compelling evidence of all is that when he was evaluating his sailors, who was good, who was bad, who was obedient, who wasn't, he wrote in Hebrew. All of these manifests you can see written in Hebrew with the names of the sailors and how um, how how effective they were working on working on the working on the ships. Now we know that October 12, 1492, was important an important date for two reasons. And of course, the obvious one is the day that Columbus set sail. Actually, it was also the same date that the Spanish Jews, by law, were given the choice of accepting forced conversion. Or leaving Spain, and uh, uh, and and leaving Spain, or if they remained, they would uh, be arrested. So the the um, judge, the 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 fact that those that date holds two two very important historical events is part of the um, of my argument that Columbus was indeed a secret Jew. And Columbus needs to be given his proper kudos. Columbus was the leading drum major for slavery. He started the transatlantic slave trade. And when he couldn't bring enough gold back to Spain and uh, Portugal to his mentors who were the Sephardic Jews who had converted to, to Catholicism, who ran the money a system and statecraft around the Spanish throne, when he couldn't bring back enough gold, as he promised Queen Isabella so she could continue the Crusades, he brought hundreds of Native Americans across the Atlantic as enslaved persons. Christopher Columbus was an experienced sailor long before his infamous voyage west. Sir Arthur Helps writes that in the course of his letters, Columbus speaks after the fashion of a practiced slave dealer. In fact, in 1498, his five ship expedition brought 600 Indians to Spain as slaves. 200 were given to the masters of the ships and 400 sold in Spain. Columbus employed slave labor in gold mining even before sailing for the New World. He helped to start the Portuguese West African settlement of San Jorge El Mina, St. George of the Mines, in present-day Ghana, formerly known as the Gold Coast. When the Spaniards found gold in the New World, reports Eric Rosenthal in his book, Gold, 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 the Johannesburg Gold Rush, they started... Quote, on a gold hunt of such intensity that the natives came to believe the white men suffered from some disease curable only by the limitless application of this metal. When Columbus discovered that, apart from some poor alluvial deposits, the gold simply did not exist, he forced the harmless Indian aborigines into slavery. The entire importation of gold from the New World for the first 20 years after 1492, represented in cash only $300,000 a year, and the total then recovered worth about $5 million, cost at least $1.5 million Indian lives. Columbus was anything but a blessing to the New World population. The Europeans led by Columbus brought unprecedented brutality to the West leaving the remains of whole communities of red people in their wake. On Hispaniola, Columbus found gold and a docile Arawak population. He lavished praise on the natives and gained their trust and affection and then proceeded to enslave them. According to Columbus, they are without arms, all naked and without skill at arms and great cowards a thousand running away from three, and thus they are good to be ordered about, to be made to work, plant, 
and do whatever is wanted, to build towns and be taught to go clothed and accept our customs. Cities began to spring up all over the land of Hispaniola. The traffic in slaves, African and Indian, grew rapidly, and some Jews were engaged in this trade as agents for the royal families of Spain and Portugal. Whether or not Columbus was a Jew, as so many Jewish historians now claim, has not been definitely proven. It is clear that his brutality against the enslavement of the native population was financed by Jewish investors. The history books appear to have confused the word Jews for the word jewels. Queen Isabella's jewels had no part in the finance of Columbus's expedition, but her Jews did. So if you want to put, give Columbus his proper due, let's make him the leading drum major for slavery and the initiator for transatlantic enslavement. But we don't do that. We have parades for Columbus Day and uh, that history is not revealed. But our, our role as historians and people involved in African history is to reveal the history. But people don't want us to do it. Not all the Europeans covering it up. And one of the key European groups covering it up have been the Jewish, European Jewish folks. Because they say their hands are clean. And when I look at their hands, it's dripping with blood. Okay. And so they say we were involved in civil rights, but I said before the civil rights movement of the 60s, where were you? In the 1860s. And let's go back a few hundred years and, and put you in the middle of enslavement. And they say we were not there. I said, well, your records tell us that we're there. I have 50 or 60 books on enslavement, and 35 of them have written by Jewish scholars on the Jewish involvement in slavery. So if you don't want us to know about your involvement, then you have to tell your people to stop writing the books and burn those they already have. As long as those books are there, we're going to study it. As long as it involves our history, we're going to reveal it. So the big attack on me for the last 10 years has been because I mentioned that some Jews, rich Jews, were involved in enslavement. Well, that's a no-no. Nobody's supposed to say that, but it's the truth. It's and okay for them to write it, but it's not okay for you to uh, mention it. And to analyze it in terms of your history and your struggles and what's happened to your people. Columbus, who they say was here in 1482, found out about traveling west over the ocean and going east and getting to the east. And so he came up with the idea of go, going east. And so he tried to float it in Spain and other places and it didn't float. But then 1492, January, Grenada fell, the last Muslim stronghold, Moorish stronghold, and that meant that the Catholics were victorious in their war against the Moors after hundreds of years. But it also meant that the Catholics now in power, with the help of Jews who switched from the Islam Moors to the Catholics, now the Catholics decided they were going to victimize the Jews. So by March they declared that any, all Jews who had converted to Christianity and were black backsliding had to be, had to leave Spain. And they gave them a certain period to get their act together to become true Christians, otherwise they had to leave. Then they decided that the, the Jews who were allowed to be Jews in Spain that had not converted were too much of a temptation for the Jews that had converted. So they said, we think you guys better get out too. So here the Jewish community that's well established in Spain and Portugal now had to leave. Now here come Columbus with his idea about sailing west. And so nobody would buy it. But these Jews knowing that they're being pushed out of Spain said, wait a minute, let's look at it. Because if there's something on the other side, maybe that's where we can go when we're kicked out. So the converted Jews of Spain funded Columbus. So we learn a little myth that Columbus's voyage was funded by Queen Isabella's jewels, when in point of fact, Columbus's voyage were funded by Queen Isabella's Jews. And their names are historically recorded, Sant'Angelo and Abernal. They were the treasures for the, the money people around the throne of, of Ferdinand uh, and Isabel. And these were the people that Columbus signed his contract with. 
So by October, by August, these people had to get out of, of Spain. And that's when Columbus set sail. And he did take some converted Jews with him, and, but he was financed by them. And he, when he sighted land, and he reported back to Spain, he reported back to them. In fact, Columbus kept two journals, one for the Spanish throne and one which was the real deal, which was the Jewish financiers that financed him. The story of the slaves in America begins with Christopher Columbus. His voyage to America was not financed by Queen Isabella, but by Louis de Santiago, who advanced the sum of 17,000 ducats, about 5,000 pounds today, equal to 50,000 pounds, to finance the voyage, which began on August 3, 1492. Columbus was accompanied by five Moranos, Jews who had forsworn their religion and supposedly became Catholics. Louis de Torre, interpreter, Marco, the surgeon, Bimal, the physician, Alonso de la Calle, and Gabriel Sanchez. So the history has not been told but it's there. So from the very beginning, because Columbus is the first enslaver, the Jewish community of wealth was involved with the enslavement process in Spain and Portugal, and then they continued in the Protestant nations of the Dutch and the English. And so their involvement spans the whole spectrum of enslavement. So if you want to see a thread that links things together, it's good to follow follow the rich Jewish involvement in the slave system, and then you can see all the parameters.